Hello. In this video, we're going to look at writing to a text file using Java. To do this, we're going to use three classes. We're going to use the File class, the File Writer class, and the Print Writer class. There's a number of ways to write to files. This is one technique. Um, but again, once you've learned this technique, go out and explore other ways to do this. When writing to files, the data must be written and then the file must be closed. I'm going to repeat this a number of times in this presentation because often when I'm working with students, they'll say my code is perfect, but nothing's showing up in my file. And the reason often is they haven't closed the file. When you write to a file, you're actually writing to a temporary location, and then once you're all set, you move it all over in one go. Using this technique, the file will automatically be created if it does not exist. So you don't have to go and create the file on your hard drive. If it doesn't exist, it will be created. If it does exist, you'll either overwrite the file or add to it depending on what your code looks like. Again, we're going to have to deal with some exceptions just like when we're reading from a file. And in this case, we're going to use a try-catch structure because it actually is, is better suited. In this video, we're going to imagine that we want to write a method that will allow us to save a string to a specific file. So the method header is going to look like this. And it's just a quick reminder, there's our return type, there's the name of our method, identifies the file object that is being used, and this is the text to be added to the file. So the steps we have to go through to write text to a file is the first thing we need to do is create a file. And in this case, it's passed to the method, so we don't have to create it. It's already been created. It's just been passed as a reference. We need to create a file writer object. We need to create a print writer object. And then we write to the file using the print writer object. And the last step is we need to close the print writer object. Like I said, you must close the file. So if we're going to make a print writer object and we're going to make a file writer object, let's look at the constructors we're going to use. Now you might look at this and notice, notice, I hope you notice one thing definitely, especially if you're in my class, but you might notice a second thing as well that might cause, cause you to pause. So there's two things here to really kind of highlight. The one that's not as obvious necessarily is that print writer, we're creating a file writer and then we're going to create a print writer using the file writer. Yet you notice the parameter that this constructor is looking for is an output stream. It turns out we can still pass this constructor a file writer object, and there's some technical reasons for that that we're not quite ready to explore in this video. Um, but this is one of the examples where I'm going to say, trust me, even though it says output stream there, we're going to pass it a file writer object. The one I hope you notice is that FileWriter throws an I.O. exception, so we have to be prepared to deal for that, with that. And to do that, we're going to use a try-catch structure. So there's your code. This is all you need to write to a file. So let's make sure we, we can we'll tie the steps that we're doing to this method here. There's the first step. We create a file. But again, we don't have to create it because it's actually passed into the method. There's our second step. We create a file writer. There's our third step. We create what's called a print writer. And notice, we're not doing this in two lines. We're doing this all in one line. So the inside here creates the file writer, and then it uses that to create the print writer. Always work from your inside out. For those of you that have taken functions, like it's a math course or studied functions, and have heard of a term called a composite function, this is the same idea. Start from the inside, work your way out. There's step four, using the print writer. And this is why I like the print writer object, is because by using the print writer, we use print and print line, and so we can, we're used to that for printing to the screen, but we can say system.out.println. And there I am closing the object. So my question is, what's the error? What's the problem? Well, remember, the file writer throws an exception, so we have to handle that exception. We have to handle an I.O. exception. So I could have this method go and throw it, but, oh, I forgot I had a hint here. See, there it is, throws IO exception. So this guy might throw an IO exception, we have to account for it. So the question is, how do we do that? 
Well, I could throw an I.O. exception, but watch. Look at the main method up there. Right now, the error is currently in the save method. When I throw the I.O. exception, the error moves up into the main method, the main method being where I'm invoking this method from. So here's the thing. If I throw an exception, I have to keep throwing it. Every method subsequently has to throw it until someone deals with it. And ultimately, if it gets thrown all the way up to the main method, there's some default behavior set to handle it. But main hasn't been told to, told to throw an exception. So I have to actually throw the exception in the main method as well. So when a method throws an exception, it throws it to the method that invoked it. When an exception is thrown, it must be thrown all the way to the main where it will get handled or be handled at some point along the way. We don't really know how to handle exceptions yet. Therefore, all methods used to call save must now throw auto exception. So here's a little picture. Our main method starts. Our main method invokes the save method. If the save method happens to throw an IO exception, it's going to throw it to the method that called it, which is main. And then main has to throw that out so it gets handled somehow. So my question is, what happens if, if save is called at some point in a more complex program? Let's say seven or eight methods are called, and then the ninth method calls save. All of those methods are then going to have to throw that IO exception, which would be really challenging to implement and, quite frankly, annoying. So that's why a try-catch is really useful in this case, because what a try-catch will allow us to do is to try something and then immediately catch which is handle that error. So notice that everything happens in the three lines below. Nothing is used after that point. So at no point later on do I need to access any of these objects. So this is a perfect situation to use a try-catch. You don't have to worry about scope issues. A try-catch will try something and if an exception is encountered, it will catch it and do something right away. So here's the general form for our try-catch. We try, this is where we put that something we're going to try, or the line of code that might throw an exception. And then we catch the exception. Now here I put just a general exception E, but you could put a more specific exception if you'd like. For example, we know that creating a new file writer will throw an I.O. exception, so we could put an I.O. exception there. And so our code looks like this. There's nothing inside I.O. exception right now. Sorry, there's nothing inside the catch structure right now, pardon me. And the, the reason why is because I just, I don't, I haven't put anything there. But if you wanted, you could put a system that would print line and you could print out some specific message for the user or the programmer, actually more appropriately said, the programmer to tell them that that's where the error has occurred and what it is. So now you can start saving your information. Okay. So the current example will rewrite the file every time. I'm going to tell you there's a small change. All you have to do is add five characters that can be made and the information will be appended to the file. And my hint is, look to the constructors. I hope this video helped.